to have the first African American as the leader, not only of the country, but the leader of the free world. And that's the phrase that Amer Americans grandiosely like to call him. But I do think it's a turning point uh, politically and so certainly culturally and socially. But certainly to have a black person at the pinnacle of the American political system will in fact change what people think is possible and give, encourage more people to run and to become involved in politics. It's tremendously important to, to uh, focus on the fact that he is part of the result of a process that's really been taking place since the late 60s and the early 70s with blacks going into professional life, particularly law. Um, and he is sort of the, the end result of all of that. And that's, it's a sort of a story, a quiet story that people haven't focused as much upon. Well, he credits her as being um, a support and catalyst and helping him get to where he is. She's important because her background is much more tra traditional. Um, she is the parents of, she's the parent, her parents are African American and of course Obama's father was Kenyan and his mother was white. So she is, represents the more the traditional uh, African American experience and being married to him, she sort of blends those two things together and she gives that, I don't want to say credibility to him, but it, it, it makes him, it makes the story much more accessible to all African Americans and other people as well. So she is tremendously important to this sort of change in the, in the sense of, of, of the social possibilities and cultural possibilities of, of African Americans. Well, they are a glamorous couple, and we haven't, you know, seen, this is it's very Camelot-esque. People hark back to Jackie Kennedy quite often, uh, and Jack Kennedy in the presidency in the early 1960s. So I do think the way they look, their style, um, Michelle's fashion sense, I mean, that gets on a lot of people's nerves. They think they should be focusing on the fact that she's a Harvard-trained lawyer. But certainly their appearance makes a big difference uh, in the way people have responded to them. And they project sort of youth and vitality, and people wanted that. He certainly is sort of fulfilling the ideals that Jefferson wrote about in the Declaration of Independence, that all men are created equal and entitled to, the li to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. That sort of Jeffersonian, that, that those words have been taken as sort of a promise of America. And, you know, whether Jefferson sort of could foresee an Obama at this point or not, that sort of promise and that sort of American credo is there. And Barack Obama has certainly taken that and run with it, um, very successfully, obviously. So there is that linkage from Jefferson, and we also think about Lincoln, Abraham Lincoln, who used Jefferson's words after this, you know, during the Civil War to sort of say, now we're gonna have a, a rebirth of freedom, meaning including blacks into citizenship. That line is definitely there. There are lots of black professional people who, and people, po politicians, who may at some point get to be Obama-like figures. Uh, I think they're more than we think of, but he is an extraordinary person because of his background. Uh, he certainly, his unique talents fit him to rise to this position at this particular moment, but I think there will be more in the future. There is his boldness, but there's also his reticence. He's a good combination of those two kinds of things that make people, he's a pragmatist who's an idealist at the same time. Um, I don't know if that's, those are contradictions, but those are, there's a tension within him. But I think that in his case, it's something that accounts for his tremendous appeal. And it's, I think, the sign of a healthy personality, not to be one thing and, and, and you know, to the exclusion of all else. Um, but I, I do think it's a duality in him that you definitely see that he has used to his advantage.